After starting the season off with an 8 0 defeat, Schalke have struggled to find form at the beginning of this new Bundesliga campaign. For the past two seasons, Schalke have failed to break into the top half of the table, so join us here today as we attempt to recover the Royal Blues. So if you've had the pleasure of seeing one of my rebuilds before, there are a couple of rules we need to go over. The first is the objective, which is to take a team to Champions League glory. Up until that point, all games must be simulated, but we will eventually be playing in the Champions League final. There are no restrictions on the transfer front, they can be as realistic or unrealistic as I want. Keep in mind your favourite play could be sold during this rebuild, if I do, I apologise in advance. Make sure you enjoy the video and stay tuned for the next few. So with our first looks here of the squad, there isn't really much to go off. The likes of Kabak, Serdar, and I'm pretty sure we have Harris as well if I'm not mistaken. Those three mainly being our, probably our only three players who are actually planning on just keeping. But for the rest of the squad, we could probably do with a pretty big reshuffle because the squad is either old or they're just not high enough rated. So we've got our work cut out for us. Obviously, the likes of Oskipka he's leaving he's 31 so we're gonna have to pick up a new left back we need to pick up a right back because there just isn't any right back so our next highest rate is 65 so we're gonna need to pick up a right back a left back and we'll probably go for a formation change as well while we're at it so i guess we'll bring guys back we'll make our first piece of business so i had a look at a quick look at the youth squad that we had given to us and i've decided to keep these two caleb gray he's got high potential but obviously his everyone's not too high and christensen he's got a quite high potential as well obviously higher rated as well but not as high potential but i'm just going to keep these two see how they develop if they do develop quite nicely i'll obviously promote them for a piece of extra backup so for the departure here guys we also had alessandro spoff here he is leaving us and he is joining Leeds united for a fee of 3.3 million euros so I have another departure here, and it's another one to the Premier League. We have sold Benjamin. Yeah, it is Benjamin. I don't know why I struggled with that. Benjamin Stambouli. The Frenchman is leaving us, and he is joining West Ham for a fee of 12 million euros. So we have got a brand new right back signing in here, guys. We have sound Jao Kim Marley here. He's joining us here from Genk. The Danish right back joins us at a cover of 14.8 million euros, and I'm hoping the Dane can be an integral part of the team moving forward. So I've got a departure here guys, we have to start to sell Salif Sane, the Senegalese centre-back, he's leaving us, he's moving over to the Premier League, he's joining Arsenal here, he's going to be joining them for a fee of 20 million euros. So we have picked up a brand new striker, because the ones that we had were pretty old, so we've picked up a young one here, we've signed Patson Daka here from Salzburg, he is joining us at the free for a fee of 22 million euros but i'm hoping that he can repay that within this season because he's got a very good potential and he's got a lot of promise going about him so i guess we'll bring you guys back if we make any more business so over the podge here guys we have sold hamza mendel here the moroccan left back is leaving us to join southampton for a fee of 3 million euros so over the podge here guys we have sold steven scarsby he is leaving us to join copenhagen for a fee of 2.5 no 2.25 million euros so over the podge here guys we have sold bastian oxpica i'm pretty sure i've butchered that pronunciation but the german left back is leaving us and he is joining porto for a fee of 5 million euros so guys, we've made a brand new left back sign in here. We have signed Ayrton. The Brazilian left back is joining us here from Spartak Moscow. He is joining us here for a fee of 15 million euros. And hopefully the Brazilian alongside Marley can provide a pretty decent full back force. So over the part here guys, we have decided to sell Mark Oof. The German playmaker is leaving us and he is joining Newcastle United for a fee of 9 million euros. So I've departed here guys, we've decided to sell Ralph Farman. The keeper has been at the club since 2011, but we need a younger goalkeeper to carry the team forward. So we have sold him to Bournemouth for a fee of 8 million euros. So we have signed a brand new backup goalkeeper here guys. We have signed Alex Romero from Real Sociedad. The Spanish goalkeeper joins the club for 28 million euros, which is quite a hefty fee, but hopefully the goalkeeper can be pretty decent for us going forward. So at the end of the transfer, we have spent 80 million bringing in Marla, Daka, Ayrton, as well as Ramira. We've got rid of quite a bunch of our players, but this is how our starting 11 is looking now. We just need the likes of Ayrton, he needs to grow a bit. Alongside Kabak, Harit, Daka, I can see them and Marla. If they just keep growing, then we should be in a good position. 
hopefully we can maybe push for Europa League football by the end of the season but I'm not too sure how it'll turn out but I guess I'll just bring you guys back and we'll see how we are in January so halfway through the season and we are halfway in the table we are currently sitting in ninth I was hoping we'd maybe be a little bit higher but we're still the second half of the season to play for because as you can clearly see we are on 25 points and Sigf is on 29 points so it only really takes two wins for us to turn this around so I guess bring you guys back if we make any signings. So I say unfortunately but Rono has been recalled by Frankfurt, he was only here on loan with us but obviously due to us signing Alex Romero and he weren't getting played they've decided to recall him meaning we are now without a strong backup goalkeeper but i'm pretty sure we'll be fine with that until the end of the season so i guess i'll bring you guys back if we make any signings so we actually haven't spent any money in this window due to us not having the funding to do so but this is how the starting living is looking as you can see we've had a few people hit the 80s now so hopefully we can continue and build on this platform that we've got for the squad and i guess i'll bring you guys back at the end of the season when hopefully we should pushed up the table a bit so at the end of the season we ended up in fifth we managed to climb up the ranking a bit and ended up in a europa league position which i'm very very happy to see because we have made definite progress from when we started off um, coming off the back of the seasons they've had this must be an absolute blessing for the Schalke fans. So hopefully now we can improve on our position from this season and maybe push for Champions League football next season. So I guess I'll bring you guys back at the start of season two. So after the party here guys we have sold Sebastian Rudy, the midfielder was on loan at Hoffenheim last season but we have decided to sell him this season to Atletico Bilbao. He is leaving us for a fee of 11 million euros. So we have got a pot here guys, we have saw Benito Rahman here, he is leaving us, the Belgian striker is joining Ajax for a fee of 14 million euros. So we've made a brand new signer here guys, we have signed Florian Niehaus from Borussia Mönchengladbach, the German midfielder joins here at the club for a fee of 43 million euros and I'm hoping the German can combine alongside his compatriots that are in midfield and hopefully have a strong midfield partnership moving forward. Our departure here guys, we have decided to part ways with Janis Karls, the German left back is leaving us and he is joining Bristol City for a fee of 1.5 million euros. So guys we have a departure here with the arrival of Nihors, there was no longer a need for Bentaleb to stay here at the club, so we have decided to sell the Algeria, he is leaving us to join her to Berlin for a fee of 22 million euros. And we have wasted no time bringing in a brand new player, we have signed Maximiliano Gomez here from Valencia. The Uruguayan joins us here at the club for a fee of 48 million euros. I'd say that's a pretty decent fee for such a good player. Hopefully now with him and Dakar up front, we have a pretty decent strike partnership. If I can carry us forward for quite a good large remainder of the rebuild. So we have spent just under 100 million in this transfer window and got rid of about 50 mils worth of players. Our starting 11 is starting to come together a bit better now. We still need players to grow a bit more, but I'm hoping now that with the likes of Gomez and Nihos in the squad, we should be able to push for Champions League football by the end of the season. Obviously, Quebec, he can keep growing, and same for basically the rest of our squad beside Marcel and Nastasic. But I guess I'll bring you guys back halfway through the season. So, halfway through the season, and we are currently sitting in fourth position, but as you can quite clearly see, the race for Champions League football is pretty close. We've got almost five teams on 32 points and all gunning for the top spots. We're just going to have to try and hold out. Potentially we could bring someone in in January, but I'm not too sure. So I guess I'll bring guys back if anything happens. So unfortunately we weren't able to make any signings in order to increase our chance for Champions League football, but I still reckon the squad could potentially do it. We just need growth from players and that should be it. We're definitely going to have to pick up a new centre-back next season to replace Nastasic, but... I'm pretty sure we'll be fine for the remainder of this season. We may need to look into picking up a new CDM as well due to Marcel being quite old, but the rest of the team's looking fine, so I guess we'll bring you guys back at the end of the season. So we've managed to obtain Champions League football in Season 2 for Season 3, but we've only done it by one point, so we're going to have to probably try a lot harder next season. We're going to have to probably bring in some pretty impressive signings if we want a chance. But we've also got to take into consideration that some of our players will grow. Hopefully we can definitely maybe push for a secure Champions League position spot. I'm not too sure about the title. We might be able to win that in the future. But for now I'm just focused on trying to maintain the Champions League position. So I guess I'll bring you guys back 
at the start of season three. So just before I do bring you guys back, I just want to learn, but we actually made it all the way to the final of the BFP Pokal, but then ended up losing to Bayern Munich. But I guess now I will definitely bring you back at the start of season three. So guys, we have signed our brand new centre-back. We have decided to sign Ruben Diaz from Manchester City. The Portuguese centre-back joins us here at the club for a fee of 48 million euros. I'm not sure why we're able to pick him up so cheap, but I can't say I'm upset about it. I'm really happy with this signing. Hopefully him and Kabak can be pretty decent for our centre-backs. So we have a departure here guys, we have sold our Serbian centre-back Nastasic, he was no longer needed at the club so I thought I'd fork out and get a pretty decent fee for him and we managed to obtain 38 million euros for him from Manchester United. So we have signed a brand new backup centre-back not too long after the departure of Nastasic, we have signed Victor Nelson here, the Danish centre-back joining us here from Copenhagen and we have signed him for a fee of 20 million euros. So the party here guys, we have decided to sell our backup goalkeeper Marcus Sherbert. He is leaving us for a fee of 8 million euros and we've sold him in order to pick up the highest rated goalkeeper for our backup. So for the party here guys, we have sold Nassim Bouljab. The Moroccan playmaker is leaving us and he is leaving for a fee of 1.7 million euros. So we have our brand new goalkeeper here. We have decided to sign Timo Horn from West Ham. The German goalkeeper is returning to the Bundesliga and hopefully he can provide some decent cover to Alex Romero if needed. So at the end of the transfer window, we have spent 84.5 mil bringing in Diaz, Nelson and Horn as well and get rid of Nastasi, Schibbe and Bula Joab. This is how our starting 11 is looking. As you can see, we are strong in some areas, but we just need some more growth from players. We're probably going to need to pick up a new CDM next season due to Marcel being quite old now. So that'll be our main focus next season. Hopefully Diaz and Nihos can grow and hopefully the same for our fullbacks and our strikers. And basically the rest of our team, we just need a bit more growth. Could hope for some players pushing into the high 80s, then that would put us in a good position for next season. But I guess I'll bring you guys back when we find our Champions League group. So we've been dealt quite a difficult-ish Champions League group for our stage. The likes of Villarreal and Marseille, both pretty decent sides. CSK and Moscow also not to sleep on, but we've not got any of the real big dogs. But the fact is that us, Villarreal and Marseille, I'd probably say we're all about the same standard currently. So I guess I'll bring you guys back when we see how we do. So guys, we are going to be progressing to the round of 16. We ended up finishing second in our group behind Marseille and above Villarreal. Moscow did pick up two points though. So we only won two, we drew four, so we did end unbeaten, but could have probably done with winning a few more games. But let's find out what our round of 16 opponent is. And we've been drawn against PSG. Fan freaking fantastic. This is going to be quite the hurdle to overcome if we do plan on progressing to the quarterfinals, but I guess I'll bring you guys back halfway through the season. So we're currently sitting top of the Bundesliga, which puts us ahead of the likes of Bayern and Dortmund. Dortmund are actually quite far behind in this title race, but obviously we're top of the league at the minute. We've got a six point lead on fourth. Not, not even a six point lead, we've got a nine point lead. No, have we? Yeah, we've got a nine point lead on fourth, meaning that we are in a good position to obtain Champions League football next season. So we just really need to keep up the pressure. Our main focus will be trying to overcome PSG next, but obviously continuing out the season and ending in Champions League is the main end game. But I guess I'll bring you guys back if we make any signings. So guys, we have made a brand new midfielder sign in here. We have decided to sign Alexis Fibas. The Spanish midfielder is joining us to play as more of a backup midfielder or he can play as a cam and a CDM as well. So he does seem like a perfect fit. He's joined us here for the club for a few 17 million euros and hopefully the Spaniard can provide some good cover if ever needed in midfield. So the arrival of Feb is being the only piece of business we've done in this window. Leaves our starting 11 looking the same as it does as we went into it in this season. As you can see though, the likes of Kabak have grown a lot. Same for Gomez, Diaz, they've all grown more now. Ayrton is almost a 90 rated now, so it's good to see if he can get to the 90 by the end of the season. But I guess I'll bring you guys back when we have our first leg of the Champions League. So we have got the first leg here against PSG. It is the home leg first, which means we're not going to be able to come into the second leg with an away goals. 
so we're going to have to try and defend this. As you can see, we have got a full strength starting 11, but they have got such a strong side. It is ridiculously strong. The likes of Neymar and Mbappe are still there, so we've definitely got our work cut out for us in this fixture. We're coming with a 1 1 draw. They have got an away goal, but that, that is not the worst. That is not the worst of results. We can still push through it. All we really need to do is not concede and score. And we should be able to go through. But I guess bring you guys back when we have to do away leg. So we have to do away leg here now against PSG. We're obviously going in 1 1. So we have got a pretty even chance of going through. Their side is still ridiculously strong. However, I did not see Neymar there. But it doesn't matter because if we don't score, we had six shots, four on target, and didn't score any. Unfortunately, this does mean we're going out due to away goals rule. Well, that is kind of disappointing that we weren't even able to pick up a single goal. But I guess we can't really do much about it now. So I guess we'll bring you guys back at the end of the season. So guys, we have held our position from where we were in January. And we have actually won the Bundesliga in our third season here. Bayern Munich not even finishing in the Champions League position, which must be quite embarrassing for them. But it was kind of close for the three Champions League, between the three Champions League spots. Us on 78, Berlin on 76, and Dortmund on 75. So it could have really gone either way through the last few days of the season. But we've come out on top. We've won the league, meaning we have got Champions League football next season and some silverware to our name. So quite a successful season despite the early knockout in the knockout rounds but hopefully we can build on that next season and hopefully we've signed some players and pushed deep into the Champions League. So I guess to bring you guys back at the start of season four. So we have got a departure here guys, we have sold Omar Mascarell here. The Spanish midfielder is leaving us for a fee of 70 million euros. He's joining PSG. They may have knocked us out of the Champions League last season but Hopefully now with him going there, we can pick up an even better defensive midfielder. So I guess bring guys back when we find that replacement. So guys, we have signed a brand new midfielder here. We have signed Wilfred Ndidi from Manchester United. The Nigerian destroyer is joining us with 135 million euros, which is a very, 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 very large sum of money. Probably one of the most expensive transfers that we've done in a rebuild, but I'm hoping the Nigerian can prove that fee to be worth it by just absolutely destroying anyone who runs in front of our defence. Hopefully with him now covering the centre-backs, we can push deep into the Champions League this season. But I guess I'll bring you guys back if we do make any more signings. So guys, we have a brand new signing here. We have signed a brand new backup striker. We have signed Timothy Weyer from Lille. The American striker is joining Zidical for 10 million when he's valued at 17 million. I don't know how we're able to pick him up so cheap, but I'm not complaining about it. So for brand new number 10 for Shark FC, Timothy Weyer, welcome to the club. So we have spent 145 million euros in this transfer and they're bringing in Ndidi and Weyer and we have got rid of Mascarell. This is how our starting living is looking now. As you can see, we've got all of our players pretty high rated now. The lowest being Nihos and 86, but hopefully he can grow. We've got a lot of players in the high 80s now, so I'm just hoping for a bit of growth from there. Hopefully now with a squad like this, we should be able to push deep in the Champions League, but that just depends on our group, which I'll bring to you guys right now. So as for this season, we have been drawn in a group with Sevilla, Nice and Dynamo Kiev. It's a group I can see us definitely getting through and I don't think we'll have much trouble. So I guess I'll bring you guys back when we have the results. So as suspected, we did end up going through. We actually dominated the group. We finished on 16 points and Nice are also going to be moving to the knockout stages with us. Sevilla going into the Europa League though. But let's see who our round of 16 opponent is. And it's Lazio, which is not PSG. So we have a better chance of progressing to the next round this time. But I guess I'll bring you guys back in January. So halfway through the season, we are currently sitting top of the table. We are sitting on 41 points in the first place and we are doing pretty good. So obviously progressing to the next round of the Champions League, we're currently top of the league. So things are going pretty good for us this season. So I'll see if I can make any signings in January. But if not, I guess I'll just bring you back on deadline day. So no new business in this window due to us not having the funding to do so unfortunately but this is our starting 11's looking. We've almost got a ton of people in the 90s now, we just need Miley to grow a bit more, the same for Nihos but this guy's looking strong, I do reckon we can push pretty deep this season. So I guess bring you guys back when we have got our first leg. So we have got the away leg first here against Lazio, full strength starting 11, 
So I guess we're just going to have to see how it goes on because I know last year probably I've got a decent strong squad. Yeah, I've got some very good players, likes of Isaac, Madison. Also got Zaha, Grimarez, Goretzka. We've got a very strong side actually. So it could be quite a challenging game. So 2-1 win, but Goretzka did get suspended, but I just saw that. So if that does put us in a pretty decent position, Daka scoring for us. Daka scoring a brace and Isaac scoring, yeah. So we're just going to have to see how we're going in the second half. We've got a two-goal advantage, so hopefully that can help us push through. So I've got the home leg here now, guys, and we have also got the 2-1 advantage with two away goals going into this leg. They are missing Goretzka, but who have replaced him with? Escalante, not really too sure on who he is, but... I reckon he won't be so weak, but we come away with a 3-1 win, so we're through to the next round. We, we dominated mostly. Obviously, we did concede twice, but we still played pretty decently. Gomez and Didi and Miley, they are picking up goals in this round, so I guess I'll bring you guys back when we find out our next opponent. So for the quarterfinals, we have been drawn up against Villarreal, which is also not one of the top teams that are remaining. But they are still a very strong side. I haven't just noticed that we have an El Clasico in the quarterfinals as well. Barcelona versus Real Madrid. But I have to bring you guys back when we have the away leg. So we have got the away leg first here up against Villarreal. I, we have got a full strength starting 11. I don't really know what to expect for their team. Lopez, Peña. They don't really have that strong a team. I was kind of expecting a bit more, but... I know Brad Arich, he's a pretty decent player, same as Kessie and Watkins, obviously, but the rest of the squad isn't really too much to write home about. I still reckon our squad is a lot better, but we're only able to pick up a 1-0 win, unfortunately. They had one shot of that game, but I mean, if they've got Komen on the bench, then I don't really know why he's not playing, but obviously Sedar, he scored for us. Well, it wasn't really too much happening in the first half, but we've got the 1-0 advantage going into the home leg. So we've got the home leg now, guys, and we have got a 1-0 advantage going into this game. We've still got our full name starting 11, luckily, so let's just see how it goes. And we'll grab a 2-0 win, so we win 3-0 on aggregate. We've put Villarreal to bed. We also bring you guys back when we've got a semi-final opponent. So in the semi-finals, we have been drawn against An against Liverpool, meaning that we'll be going to Anfield for our first leg of the semi-finals. It's going to be quite a difficult game. Hopefully we'll come out on top. I'll also bring you guys back when we are at the first leg. So I've got the away leg here first against Liverpool. Unfortunately, Ayrton is out through suspension. So that must mean that Nelson is playing at left-back for us. He's obviously not typically a left-back, but... It's probably the best player we have to fill in there. Liverpool's squad is really strong still, despite us being quite far into the career mode now. But hopefully we can still come out on top. Maybe grabbing a away goal would be nice. We grab a 1-0 win, so we have grabbed an away goal here at Anfield. Maxi Gomez grabs us one. Cater got sent off. So this puts us in a pretty decent position for next game. So, I guess I'll bring you guys back when we have the home leg. So, we have got the home leg here now against Liverpool. We have got the 1 0 advantage going into this. We have also got the away goal. We have got our full sense start 11 due to Ayrton being back. So, we just really need to grab a goal. Or not, and we can just get a 0 0 draw, which is still enough to put us through due to our 1 0 win in the first leg. Seems like a very uninteresting game, but. We've gone through now, we're through into the final in the Champions League in the fourth season here. Guess me and guys back when we found out who our opponent is. So it'll be Barcelona versus ourselves here in the Champions League final. We are going to have to overcome quite a difficult opponent here. Who did Bar Barcelona beat her to Berlin in the semi-finals in order to get there. We beat Liverpool, but the 2024 Champions League final will be between us and Barcelona. So unfortunately we were not able to get back-to-back -to -back title wins as Bayern Munich end up winning it this season. We end up coming in second though still, so we have got Champions League football if we do not win it this season. Berlin, who made it to the semi-finals, got third position, so they'll have another crack at the Champions League next season. We end up finishing on 71 points, so it weren't too far behind, but if we could have turned a few of those draws into wins or some of them losses into draws, then I reckon we could have potentially pushed for the title, but... 
All we've got to do now is see how we go on in the Champions League final. So we also won the German Super Cup. I'm not really too sure what this competition is, but I'm going to assume it's the German version of the Community Shield because we ended up did winning the league. So we did end up winning that 3 2 over Leverkusen. So here's a look at how our team is looking going into the Champions League final. We've got Ayrton who hit a 91 recently and Kabak who hit a 92. Miley didn't go as much as I thought he would. Ayrton did end up stealing the show. We've got the likes of Ndidi and Serdar and Niehaus in midfield, as well as Harry all in the very high 90s. And Daka and Gomez are both pretty decent strikers. Timothy Way will provide a decent backup if needed. But I guess I'll meet you guys back when we are in the Champions League final. And Barcelona are kicking off this final here. Hopefully we can come out on top. It should be a decent final here at the San Siro between ourselves and Barcelona. I guess we'll bring guys back if something interesting happens. Barcelona with some spaces. Frankie de Jong. It's a good tackle from Quebec. Still got the ball. Can we time the pass perfectly? Can Daka get onto the end of it? He can. He's beat Kula Bali. He shoots and he's bounced back off the bar. Barcelona with a lot of space here now. The link of it, Savage. De Jong played it in. Is Lautaro Martinez and Trincao scores. That is absolutely awful defending. Where was our defence? It's just disappeared. I'm not even too sure what really. Why did our players just fell over there then this poor defending it's a simple goal that puts us behind in the Champions League final. We've intercepted the ball in midfield but it's not enough and then we're going into this second half 1-0 down. We've got a lot to do in the second half because we've not really had much going forward. Kicking off the second half we've got a lot to do. We really need to do with grabbing an early goal in order to get us back in the game but Guess I'll bring you back when something happens. Ball played out wide. Laturo Martinez. Great tackle from Quebec. Here's Ndidi though. We could really do with someone making a forward run. Maxi Gomez to Daka. Out wide to Harrit. Out wide to Myler who's running through now. This is a chance. This is a great chance. If we can just get the cross right. Not back post. <gasps> back to Maxi Gomez and he doesn't score. That was the chance. 
Intercepted by Ndidi. Here's Daka. Ball played over the top. Can he get onto it? Just beat by to Stegen. We have a free kick quite far out here. We're going to try and pour it in that top corner. Pretty poor effort. Got a chance here. Ayrton running down this left wing again. Plays it in. Here's Nihos. Ball out wide here. Here's Daka. Cuts it back. It's Nihos. Harry, Maxi Gomez. Come on, we need to make a chance from this. Crossed in is Daka, yes! We've equalised in the 87th minute. We took our sweet time. But boy, was it worth it. That was a lovely goal. Lovely piece of play out wide here. Lovely dink into the back stick. Daka free. Simple finish pass to Stegen. Barcelona have not done anything in the second half. We've dominated and we've finally got our reward for it. Barcelona with a late chance to win it here in the 92nd minute. Sindidi, can we play the pass forward? Can Daka? <gasps> the ref let us play on. This would be the ultimate steal if we can just grab it. <gasps> Maxi Gomez, no! Oh. This game's going to extra time. I thought we were going to win it right at the end there, but for heavy touch from Daka, it was a, and it led to a poor cross in the end. But we're going to extra time. Barcelona getting this second part of the game underway now. Not too much time left, but we've still got a lot to do. Mikiel with the chance out wide to cross one in. He goes alone and does cross it, but it's intercepted, blocked. And we've finally cleared it, nearly. We've cleared it, and we're on the counter-attack now. Maxi Gomez, with a ball out wide to Ayrton. Can we make something of this late chance? We'll draw the cross, and it just goes past everybody. There's Milinkovic Savage near the end, is and Didi's won it back. De Jong has it, though. And not really much happened in this first half. We've still got a lot to do. We could really do with grabbing a goal in the second bit of extra time because I don't fancy going to penalties. We really need to grab a goal in this second bit of extra time because there isn't really much left to do but we could really do with grabbing a winner. Ball played out wide is Ayrton. Crosses the ball in. Maxi Gomez! It's saved by to Stegen. Here's the chance. Ball play this, said, oh, safe by the Stegen again. Barcelona on the counter attack with Messi and Richarlison. Richarlison still has the ball coming, please tackle him. Messi plays the ball over the top. Ramiro claims it. Can we maybe grab one last chance on the counter? Oh, Myler, this is it, this is the chance to win it here. Ball crossed into Maxi Gomez. And this game's going to go to penalties. Oh no. So Barcelona will be taking this first penalty here. Richarlison versus Ramiro. And Ramiro saves it. This puts us in a brilliant position to have the first penalty go in. We're going to go straight down the middle with Maxi Gomez here. And we've scored it. Usman Dembele is next stop. He's going to go to right. He went bottom left. But this time we're going to go bottom left. Come on, Harry, don't miss. Yes! Nicolo Barella, he's going to the left. Daka. Come on, go for a nice penalty here. Top corner. And he bangs it. Here's Messi. He's missed. Messi's missed. For a knee horse to win it here. And he smashes it in. <laughs> We've won our penalties against Barcelona. I was really scared coming into this, but that first save from Ramiro put a lot more pressure on Barcelona. Messi missing his penalty did us a world of good as well. Knee horse with a simple penalty straight down the middle. High and hard. And we've actually done it, guys.
we won on penalties. So we've actually won the Champions League now. <laughs> like, I still can't believe it. <laughs> I really hate penalties on FIFA 21. They're so inconsistent, but we've come out on top this time. But with the team, it was obviously strong in, in a lot of areas. It was quite balanced on a whole, but still would have liked maybe a few more higher rated players. But we still won the Champions League. Season 4, it took us two. But I guess let you guys enjoy the rest of the celebrations.